All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, August 18th, 2023. We welcome you to a work session of the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County. It is an absolutely beautiful day today in Manatee County. We're going to start this meeting in our normal fashion. We're going to start by honoring God and by honoring this great nation. So to lead us in prayer today is James Satcher, County Commissioner, after which Interim County Administrator and Air Force Veteran Charlie Bishop will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, if you're able, please stand. All right, that's a up. Uh, join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you have been good to us. You continue to be good to us. We thank you that that's in your nature. It's just who you are. And Lord, I ask you today to be a part of this meeting. Uh, we understand that uh, God governs in the affairs of men. And we thank you that if we are ever... Um, if we ever turn away from you, we've lost our hope. You've been good to us. You've been good to this nation. You've been good to this county. I pray that during our conversation today that you would lead us and guide us. Lord, I'm not, um, we're not ignorant of the fact that, you know, there's, there's people, they're looking at their livelihood. They're looking at their future. Um, but I pray that each person here, no matter what, would have the ultimate assurance that you are the one that takes care of us uh, day after day. And no man, no person can determine um, our relationship with you, or our future here on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, commissioners. Pretty uh, basic agenda here today. It's a county attorney item. Board discussion on the selection of final candidates for the county administrator. Mr. Clegg. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. So I understand that this morning you conducted individual interviews with the candidates. Mr. Rick Connor from the consultant is here to um, facilitate the individual interviews with the candidates. So I would ask him to come down to the podium and just give us a quick uh, explanation of how this is going to work and then uh, we should get started thank you sir honorable commissioners that's very simple straightforward today we will uh, bring in a candidate one at a time let you as a group now uh, post any questions carry on conversations uh, it's it's at your discretion and your desire we have um, th thanks to the staff we really appreciate by the way all they have done just been phenomenal but they uh, have killed the sound in the room, so each candidate will be unaware of what's been discussed before, so you don't have to worry about that. Other than that, if we can assist in any way, we will, but I think uh, you're probably just about ready for this. Mr. Chairman, unless uh, commissioners have any questions, I would suggest we proceed. Commissioners, do we have any questions before we proceed? No questions. All right. All right. To your first candidate. <clears throat> Good afternoon, commissioners, Mr. Chairman. No questions. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, well, since the public since the public is watching this, if, I think the first thing if, will be appropriate for you to give just a, a brief introduce yourself and give a brief background on yourself. All right, appreciate that. Uh, born and raised in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, grew up in a, a private pharmacy business. My father owned Doherty's Pharmacy for 47 years. Learned uh, customer service at an early age. Uh, met my wife 29 years ago on a blind date. Uh, we moved down to South Florida. We're in West Palm Beach area where our five babies were, were born. Uh, from there, 2007, decided to go back uh, for a second master's, which was my MBA from University of Notre Dame. So with five babies in tow, left the workplace, uh, developed a better skill set from uh, Indiana, worked our way through uh, Charleston area, uh, worked out of Macon, Georgia for a number of years, went through a consolidated government there, and then down to Hillsborough County. So we're in uh, living in uh, Riverview for a number of years, and Holmes Beach was our place we'd take the, uh, take the children down. Uh, so we're well aware of at least Manatee County, not all the facets, but, but this area itself. And uh, uh, from there, though, I was always uh, pretty much destined to get into the management side uh, from where I was. I've always uh, kind of felt leadership could be a little better than I've had over the years. So I uh, took the opportunity to move up to Michigan 
and there I've been uh, five and a half years city manager uh, just outside of Detroit. Where it's a full service uh, city where I have police, uh, elections, tax assessor, everything is, is under, under my jurisdiction. But the plan was always about five years, six years at the most, and then work our way back to, uh, to Florida. So although I'm from Pennsylvania, uh, we very much see ourselves as, uh, as Florida residents after spending 15 years of our 30-year career uh, down here. And uh, that, so that brought us down to uh, you know, consider this opportunity for an area that we know, but it also feels like coming home when I uh, arrived on the airplane uh, a couple of nights ago. All right, very good. Let me see. No one is on the board for questions, so thank. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. If you want to ask, okay, Mr. Commissioner Turner. So just put yourselves on the board, and we'll we'll go through for questions. Unless you just want to just go around the horn. Just, uh, just put on the board. Okay. We'll stick with the board then, Commissioner Turner. All right. So, um, how would you describe the perfect culture as you see it? perfect work environment with your leadership I'd say and this is from my own standpoint when I was younger in the, in the lower levels is a, a working environment where I'm excited to go to every day um, I'm happy with the leadership above me the people that I work with they have a common interest and everybody has the same strong work ethic uh, the uh, the leadership is, is setting the vision where we're going they also have themselves the tenacity for action of, of moving forward but we also have uncompromising values. I believe strongly in the ethical foundation. I think I talked about uh, this morning to each of you about being fair and being honest and telling the truth, keep your word, exercise integrity. It uh, uh, hardens me a little bit when I see any public administration uh, having anybody involved in some questionable issues, not just ethical issues, but even worse. And I, I feel you come to work in a, a, a solid environment of uh, focus on excellence and success, everybody working well together. There's always different agendas. I know working with many elected officials, but everyone has the common interest of moving forward. So I think the uh, overall, a place that I, myself, as well as the commissioners and the staff come together and, uh, and feel great about where they are. And when they leave, can't, look, can't wait to get there the next day to, to start again. That, to me, is a perfect positive environment. All right, thank you, sir. Commissioner Bearden, you're up next, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you for coming down here and um, for the last couple of days and seeing what Manatee County is all about. Yeah. That being said, uh, if you were to get hired, um, what would be your 30, 60, and 90-day plan as you <laughs> came on board? Uh, well. <laughs> We laughed because I handed out a 30, 60, 90 day plan to everybody. Uh, it's, it's really getting in touch uh, you know, with the staff, meeting with everybody, uh, council or commissioners uh, specifically of, of what is your agendas, other than the many meetings I've watched and different topics you've come across, what is it down deep that uh, the reason that you're in your seats also? So we can, uh, staff can help champion some of your causes. Uh, going into the 60 days, it's really getting into the community getting together with each of the, each of the cities and towns uh, you know, within Manatee County, uh, local groups, uh, the biggest sports groups and work our way down, church groups, everybody involved overall. And then getting into the 90 days is, is action, uh, certainly moving forward. Now there's gonna be action on day one. I am, as, as many of you heard me say this morning, I am not one of those, uh, uh, not a government worker, but I do work for the government. So I believe in, in moving quickly and not uh, just feeling the environment and, and let's get the things later. But I think the 30, 60, 90 day uh, that I gave the impression was, was pretty much gathering all the information I can as, as quickly as possible, letting the staff know uh, the type of uh, manager I am. I'm very much more of a uh, hands-on in the beginning of understanding and, and realizing the weaknesses and strengths of some of the staff around me, but moving quickly into a servant leadership role where it's often my question for everybody is, what can I do to make your job better? What resources do you need from me to be better? And I think quickly the staff that will be very gun shy, no matter who comes into this position, is gonna wonder what their future is. They're gonna find very quickly that I enjoy smiling, you know, laughing, uh, but also I'm quick to make a decision as needed. I have empathy for, for staff and for people, but I also believe in, in strong discipline 
for those that are getting outside the box because every day our job is to serve the citizens of Manatee County and that's a high expectation uh, and it should not be taken lightly. So I think in the beginning it's, it's meeting everybody and understanding their concerns at the same time making them feel comfortable of who I am and, and where we're going into the future. Is that all, sir? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Ballard. So help us a little bit to understand what your communication <clears throat> style will be like uh, with, with us as commissioners, how you'll communicate, uh, and how often. Uh, as much as you would like, truly. I, I believe in, in uh, myself leading the champion, the causes that you have, and making sure staff is well aware. I'm very clear in understanding that the direction of the Manatee County uh, goes by way not of the, the county administrator, but it's the commission themselves. Uh, my job is to implement your, your direction. Uh, hopefully it's seven zero in some of the directions, maybe not always, uh, but it depends on how often you want to meet. I have no interest in bringing anything to the table or any surprises, something that you read about or you hear about somewhere else. I'd rather have the commission know exactly what, what I'm thinking, where we're going, and find out any loopholes that you may know from the past, something like that was tried before. I, so I believe in, in definitely a working relationship you know, with the commission. Uh, even decisions that technically fall under the uh, administrator's purview, especially if it's significant, all of y'all should know exactly what direction we're going in, so it's not a surprise. It may not be a decision by the commission. Now that's not to say every day ideas are gonna come by, but certainly it's still an administrator's job to lead the staff. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, Emails, usually it's an everyday situation. Here's something happening, even in the community, something serious happened, an incident happened in one of your districts. I'm aware of you may not be, I'd be in contact with you. Offices right here, I'm going door to door. Uh, you would probably have to let me know, don't come by as often, because I want, uh, my administration would be working well together with the commission, uh, because there should not be uh, a split between the two of us, because again, essentially, I know I work for 412,000 people. Directly, I work for seven, and then the staff, you know, works for that, that same group. So we have to be on the same page. So the more communication, the better. And again, I think any commission I've worked with in the past will tell you, yes, he's, he's very open. As an, H, as an HR director once said when, when, uh, about secrets, she goes, Doc doesn't keep secrets. You know, he puts pictures on the wall and tells everybody that comes in about what he's looking to do for the future. So there aren't a lot of secrets. I'm very much open with transparency. All right, thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, you, you're you currently a city manager for a city as part of a larger county with, with Wayne County, and you're previous to that, you were a director of a large county. So you've seen both sides of the municipality issue, and you and I spent a fair bit of time talking about that because we have six municipalities here. And yes. you know, some we play well with and some less so, but, but all of them are important, especially to the, the general growth. When I had asked you, if there was anybody you reached out to ahead of time, anyone you spoke to to get a general idea of Manatee County, you specifically pointed to one person who's directly related to a municipality, mm -hmm. you know, what, which is the, the city manager for city of Bradenton. Um, what's your takeaway on that? It's, it's our, our city seat, uh, as you and I discussed, getting the, 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 the growth patterns down here, working well together as a county and a city is critically important for for the growth of this county as a whole. What did you learn from your conversations with Rob? Where do you think you can go to continue facilitating the goodwill we're building with this city? Rob is, uh, is very complimentary of the commission, uh, which was which great to hear from the start. I understand in the past there may have been some issues between county and city, uh, but he, he was very positive uh, uh, about the relationship that you have now. One thing in, in traveling around the country, going back to your question a little bit of I've been in small cities, big cities, small counties, big counties, Palm Beach County, I thought was, uh, uh, did it right when I was over there in, in that area. The county certainly was the big brother of everybody, but they made sure that each of the cities had the resources and were taken care of to be successful. And naturally, Palm Beach County benefited by all the cities being successful. And that's what I see here also is is the relationship with each of the cities as much as possible of making sure that they're successful because it's only gonna come backwards to the, the areas that aren't fully incorporated. Um, certainly your, your downtown right now, your biggest downtown is, is Bradenton. How can they be more successful? Uh, 64, uh, traffic, that's, 
that's an issue. What alternatives there may be for that? I experienced that when I was living in Riverview, um, but there wasn't anything specific that that Rob put out that uh, you know would make a difference from anything that I knew. So there's nothing that dirty and secrets I can <laughs> I can share. But I also made a call to our Economic Development Council to uh, uh, I, I talked to Ms. Hillstrom about uh, and to referred to the road building of this commission that understanding that infrastructure is first, and that is one thing that I learned heavily by living in Hillsborough County. There was a lot of growth with very little infrastructure planned out. So it was, it was great to hear her say that and then speaking with each of you this morning about a focus of certainly growth is happening, but we're also smart enough that uh, infrastructure needs to be put in place first, and that was my experience in Hillsborough, and that's the way I, I spoke to some of our residents last night at our get-together was that I'm not an anti-growth person by any means, but certainly we need to have the infrastructure in place with it. All right, thank you, sir. Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, Doc, thank you very much for being here, and thank you for coming down and, and going through the speed dating process. <laughs> um, that's always fun. Uh, and also, thank you for your kids' service, being all at the military academy and um, serving, our, uh, serving our country. I got a quick, just one quick question. We need to get a chance to get into it and really dive down in, in the part of your uh, resume, which is, you know, pretty strong. Um, sustainability. Talk to me about it. You you went out there. You said you formed the city's first sustainability, sustainability plan. Yes. Could you ex explain what that means to you? you know, looking at the big picture, especially from an administrative side, there's there is no magic bullet to hold back the tides or, or anything else at, at some point. But there are many things that we can do. And one of the biggest pieces of the sustainability plan was green architecture. Just looking at all of our buildings, retrofit or any new buildings that we're building, may not go as far as LEED certified where there's plants on the roof, but certainly just the simple things of everything's LED, everything's smart electrical systems, uh, heating systems, the, the toilets and sinks, automatic shutoffs, and just uh, a snowball effect of it's not just a savings as sustainability for the environment, but it's also a financial benefit long term. So, you know, sustainability is broken into three parts. You've got the social responsibility, financial responsibility, and environmental responsibility. You may come across some groups that just say, forget the money, it doesn't matter, it's all about the environment. Clearly, that is not an appropriate way to approach it. We have to look at the financial benefits or understand if money's going into sustainability, is there a benefit some other way? Uh, I, I looked into fleet management of uh, going to hybrid and electric vehicles. I know they're getting into dump trucks now, and I don't believe we're quite there uh, to be able to do the service of the county with too much electrical uh, vehicles that way. But certainly sustainability is a consideration of native plants as opposed to some plants that take heavy water. Certainly some areas you want to have a, a brighter, beautiful island. Other areas maybe we don't focus on that. So. So the sustainability plan and, and just my approach pretty much is more of a common sense approach of you can't just spend unlimited funds to be sustainable because we don't quite know if that's going to make the difference long term or not, but you did spend a lot of in finance, a lot of money. On the other hand, there is a way of bringing money back if you're smart, uh, looking at the green architecture, at least in that direction. Yes, thank you, sir. I don't have anyone else on the board. Excuse me, I don't have anyone else on the board at this time. I would just add that I enjoyed our conversation and our time together. I think I got most of what I wanted to ask you. I think I really got all of what I wanted to ask you Thank across, you. And, and I enjoyed getting to know you. Thank you. So, yeah. I appreciate it, Commissioners. Thank you for your time and for the invite. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, Thank you, sir Thank you. for being here. Plague. We very much appreciate it. Okay. That's Nothing all. Else, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, I believe that. Um, we may need a few minutes to bring the next candidate down because they are, I'm not sure, are they sequestering them in back or up, upstairs? They are in back? Okay. That's not what I originally was told by the consultant, so I apologize for the confusion. I, I don't think he was aware of the conference that room we could, or that we could turn the, right. the sound off in there. I understand. You want to turn the question? Yes, Commissioner Ron. I just, uh, Mr. County Attorney, real quick. So the protocol is is that, that all of them, the four come in front of us. We ask our additional questions, whatever. They leave, then we're going to deliberate the, the, the different candidates today, or 
how do we going to There's no voting today because this is noticed as a work session. Yeah. But you, the, it's up to the board if you want to talk further after the interviews are done. You are certainly, the, the, okay. that's the prerogative of the board if you're inclined to do so. Okay. I think the consultant may have a few closing remarks after we do the individual um, interviews and then we can talk about that. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else you need right no, now? No, sir, I think we're ready for the next candidate, please. So, Lee, we, we're just getting started off by having you, since the public is watching this, even though you've met all of us, sure. we're going to have you introduce yourself and give a quick background on yourself. Okay. Uh, Lee Smith um, previously worked in Chatham County, Georgia, Savannah, it's just well say Savannah, everybody knows where it's at. Um, you know, I've been in this business just over 35 years in local government, so I feel like I've grown up in local government, um, from fire marshal to building inspector, um, you know, animal control, deputy manager, deputy clerk. Um, probably one of my most enjoyable times was economic development, uh, being able to work with the North Carolina Department of Commerce and um, being able to not just retain industry, but go into Canada and Europe and the West Coast and recruit industry, you know, and creating jobs, which is pretty fulfilling when you see people being able to self-sustain. Um, so, um, you know, I went to U, uh, UNC Wilmington, um, after college, went uh, back to my home county, and that's where I went to Mayberry RFD, as I've told most of you, and did a little bit of everything, but it was a good experience, and then I really got to learn a lot about how things work in individual departments. Um, that was my, other than living through hurricanes, um, in fact, hurricanes is a bad word in my house, but... Um, was, you know, looked at the first, I guess, at 22 years old, evacuating the county, uh, running shelters with the Red Cross. So um, actually got up to a building, Inspector 3. So I was all the way up to commercial. And then I left and went, okay, I don't think I want to do this anymore. So I went and did economic development full-time for a few years in um, uh, Whiteville, North Carolina, which was Columbus County. Then uh, I decided I really liked daily operations uh, and general management. I had worked on some uh, bonds for water, sewer, a lot of projects and getting grants uh, from the state and feds and bringing the legislature in and um, bringing in, you know, rail and those kind of things. Um, and, you know, the, re the bond issues gave me the opportunity to work with um, water authorities, uh, the local um, you know, uh, wastewater drainage assessments, and I'd like that. And the county administrator at the time recommended, he said, you know, if you like this, and uh, why don't you apply for it's county, Washington County, small county in um, upper northeast North Carolina. And I applied and got it. Um, you know, went there, it's a, you know, a small county, but was able to, uh, in North Carolina counties, handle social services, health, plus all the other things that we all do. Uh, so that was an interesting thing, you know, working with adoptions and, um, you know, child protective services. So it gave you a whole different aspect of, of um, you know, how people are affected on a, you know, day-to-day -day basis, you know, by government. Um, was there just over eight years and went to Wayne County, North Carolina. It was the home of Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Uh, most of my uh, stays have been near um, military bases, so, you know, very familiar with missions, and, you know, their bad word is uh, base realignment, BRAC, so I've worked with those um, three times uh, in my career. But Wayne County, um, uh, as county manager or CEO, I had uh, the opportunity to work on, as I've told many of you, you know, this morning, uh, projects like combining EMS into one unit under the county, um, you know, taking 39 fire departments uh, down below 20, that was uh, bumps and bruises, uh, that, but it got it done. Built the first uh, in the state. Now, you know, we had a competition with Wake County or Raleigh to build the first 800 megahertz uh, system. And State Highway Patrol liked it enough, they modeled their state system after our system. And, uh, you know, I've got to talk to some of your folks yesterday about the communications, and it looks like you're in pretty good shape on communications. Um, you know, one of the big things that um, I talk about is, you know, developing really a culture of, of 
team, you know, building great benches for um, not just administration, but also in departments so you can have succession planning. Uh, you just can't fly blind. You know, I, I, I make a joke, and I'll go outside, and I hope I don't get hit. I'll say, what happens if a bus hits you? Who's taking over tomorrow? And if you don't have that, you've got a problem. And that has been a major uh, point when I go into an organization to look at uh, the makeup of our managers, uh, supervisors, and, you know, see who we have that can fall in succession to run. You know, so um, that culture of team, and I think I've said to every one of you um, today that as an administrator, the reason I like to say um, team is the guy that sweeps the floor or the person that works at the landfill or somebody that, uh, you know, fixes potholes. I'm no important than they are. And they work with me, not for me. And we have to understand that. And that's the whole team concept. And I believe that very strongly and i was very impressed yesterday to talk to some of your folks on the uh, windshield tour um we got to get out a couple times but uh, i appreciate that and you guys allowing us to do that and see your capital projects um, that has been something for me over the last 20 years is looking for funding for capital projects courthouses jails unfortunately um uh, you know looking at uh, water system expansion um, going after grants, um, you know, working with um, our lobbyists, you know, to go to Washington, get into the Interbelt line and say, how much money do you have for me? And, you know, beg and plead for certain projects like transit. And I know you guys are, um, you know, working hard on that, on, you know, to get roads off, I mean, cars off the roads. So that's a major issue that, um, that you know, I appreciate as someone in there that you're attacking. That's a really good way to do it. Um, went to Chatham County, um, was there just over, I left in January of this year. Um, the big thing, when I walked in, the chairman who was, uh, Chairman Al Scott, he gave me a list of about 20 or 22 things. He said, I need these done while I'm chairman. <laughs> and a lot of those were get our bond rating up because we're going to be building some things and we need to get the best deal possible when borrowing this money, basically. And we were successful in that and moving uh, that up. I will say in Wayne County, um, my team and I actually moved our bond rating up in 2008, which, I mean, the economy was shot. But when the bond rating agencies came in, they upgraded. I was like, you know, that says a lot for our team, uh, you know, for our financial, but for the board and setting policies and adhering to them. Uh, so very strong in the policy side. So, um, you know, Chatham, 2,300 or so people, um, you know, really enjoyed working there. Very similar community, um, coastal community. It's like I work coastal and I just keep going further south. I guess if you hit Florida, that's about it, you know, and as far as the country. But, um, you know, I have um, a son. Um, he's 33 and I have a grandson and he's the best grandson in the world. And uh, then I have my daughter who lives with me in, um, in Savannah right now. So uh, raised, I think I told you, raised on, the, um, on a small island off the coast of North Carolina, Ocracoke Island. And, um, you know, probably I, I miss those first 12 years on being raised on an island with 350 people. I'll never, you know, have that again. And by the way, the show, The Outer Banks, it's not like the real Outer Banks. So if you don't, don't, you know, don't believe that. So anyway, so that's just a little bit about me, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Turner. Hey, Lee, uh, you mentioned, you mentioned in your uh, dissertation there, the succession plan. I think that's actually something that we probably lacked in this particular role. Can you dig down a little bit for me on the leadership, your leadership style? How do you build trust? How do you get everybody rowing the same direction? You did elaborate with me, but I think it's important for the group. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing, um, as I mentioned to a couple of you, uh, and the most important thing in local government um, is, you know, communication, communication skills, uh, making uh, everyone not feel involved, but be involved, uh, your entire team. But that requires time. It requires time in, in talking with folks, finding out what the needs are, what they like, what they don't like. I mean, you know, and it's the same thing with board members, sitting down individually as a board, 
uh, to find out what are your priorities. And it's the same with uh, any department. Uh, as far as leadership, I, I do believe, and I would challenge you if you call the past uh, three counties, you'll find out that um, they all know they're the best teams possible uh, because we built that culture. Uh, we built a culture of we work for each other. And, you know, if somebody fails in utilities, then I fail. And then ultimately you fail as commissioners. So it really was spent a lot of time. That first 90, 120 days is getting out there and let folks see um, your team members. Um, but developing trust, whatever you tell them you're going to do, do it. And if you don't, you better have a good answer because they're the best asset you'll ever have or the worst enemy you've ever had, your own team members or then employees. So uh, a lot of it is, is spending time communicating up to the board, but also communing uh, all the way down with, like I said, the guy who sweeps the floor. He needs to understand what's going on too. He's a citizen, but he's part of that team. And how can I help more? So it's trust, building loyalty, res dual respect, and communicating well. And uh, when you do that, you'll change that culture. And, and lastly, but should be first, is you have to let your folks know you care, that you care about them. Um, if you care for them, they'll care about, and they're going to give you not 100 percent, they're going to give you 200 percent. All right, thank you, sir. Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Lee, thank you for the time we spent together. Sure. I do love that river walk there on Savannah, though. Um, <laughs> that's a great place to yeah. go and visit. I have this one question, and we didn't get a chance to get in this because it's such a short time. Could you, you know, if you've watched anything about Manti County, we've had a lot of drama here lately with the current administrator, the past administrators and other boards and stuff. And I know you've got had some friction with your board mm -hmm. that year before. Could you just walk me through that just a little bit? You don't have to get real deep and dig down. Uh, just walk me through, you know, how if there's confusion or conflict or whatever, mm -hmm. that we wouldn't be in the same place. Um, sure. You know, um, that we wouldn't get to the same place as you are today with us, if that were to yeah. transpire. Sure. Um, I appreciate the question. Um, you know, again, worked in this business for 35 years, and, you know, you do get with board members and whole boards where they're going to take a different direction. And we as managers have to accept that and know sometimes it's not personal, sometimes it is. And uh, in the case in Chatham County, we had some pretty major projects and changes coming about that caused some major, major rifts amongst board members, you know, to a point of not talking. And when that broke down, I will tell you, um, it broke down with the administration. Uh, it was, you know, very divisive, unfortunately. Um, I will tell you, I had accomplished everything that really the first chairman wanted me to accomplish. Um, I can honestly say I was beginning to look spring of 22 and I knew the the you know the tide was shifting and you know and I had told my two deputy managers and they were ready to step up that I was ready and that I thought that this was coming and you know and that's all right and uh, we eventually did it and worked something out um, I have no regrets about um, you know I, I feel very good about what I did in Chatham um, hold nothing if that's what the board's direction was. So we mutually agreed. And when I sat down with the county attorney and the chairman, um, I told him I was ready to go anyway. You know, I really was looking for, you know, something else. And I was ready to pass the ball. So, you know, I mean, I saw some of the commissioners, gosh, uh, at one of the last hockey games, you know, and sat with them. I mean, so it's not personal. You know, it was that they were taking a... Um, a different direction and they felt like you know they needed someone else and again that's all right so thank you for thank you for your candor thank you sir sure thank you sir commissioner bearden thank you mr chair and i appreciate we had the opportunity to have the very first interview this morning yeah so um my question is is that during covid mm -hmm. um how did you how did you handle COVID from a county aspect regarding your employees and vaccinations? Mm -hmm. 
We, well, first of all, we felt strongly along with, you know, we really modeled our policies much like, uh, you know, Governor Kemp. Uh, we felt like he had a very straightforward, um, common sense approach, um, you know, because it was real. I mean, people did get sick. I had it twice, uh, but it was a, just a cold, so, I, you know, I, I fared well. But with our, um, there was a couple things, with our team members, we had some that came to us and said, I want to feel protected, okay? Here are the PPEs, here's what our policies, you know. So we actually asked our employees, you know, what kind of policies do we need, how stringent? Um, you know, we had a lot who chose, um, you know, to get vaccinations. Now, what we offered is uh, some incentive if they wanted to do it. And I think it was to get both and the, you know, vaccinations were free. Um, there were some areas where they were offered, I mean, it was 25 or $50 or something if they would do it. Um, and that was the choice of the board. And, you know, we respected that and did it. Um, we probably had vaccinations over 90, 95%. It was pretty high. But uh, particularly in our court system, because, you know, you're working with the grand jury and daily juries, um, you know, they felt, you know, they needed to take care of themselves. Um, now, if someone said, I don't want to, we've said, well, you know, you're taking, if the risk is the risk, you're taking that on yourself. So the other thing is we didn't want to scare the public. Um, you had to be very careful about that because, you, you know, you can demonize anything and then people just get really frightened. You know, like coming in for jury duty, they were scared to death. We had people who uh, refused to go, and of course, then there was a bench warrant <laughs> for them to come in. But uh, that was that was probably the most difficult was courts. Uh, but as far as vaccinations, um, we urged but did not require. You know, it was it was an individual's decision, and I still feel like that was the right thing to do. It was made available. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, no one else is on the board, but I. Uh, I was, go. Okay, go I was going to ask a quick question, which which is sort of a softball, but I didn't get to ask you upstairs. There, I think there are a lot of similarities between Chatham County and this place, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering, is that part of the reason you were drawn to applying to this job? And and if so, what, you know, how do you what similarities do you see, and how do you feel that being in Chatham prepared you for Manatee County? Um. First of all, it was just the growth in general, you know, because we had Georgia Ports, which, you know, if you if you ever drive up into Chatham and you see the trucks, um, uh, you look at the highways, and I mean, I'm sorry, but, you know, heavy trucks, heavy traffic, maintenance is uh, more frequent, it damages the roads. Uh, so I see here with your traffic, very similar issues as far as, you know, you know, it's like when you build a highway, you got to keep it up. So it's for it's forever. It's like kids. It seems like they never go away and don't ask for a check. You know, but um, so you know, I see that. But also your housing. Um, you know, Chatham County. We were very fortunate and very successful in bringing, um, you know, a lot of logistics centers. But also, uh, you know, with Amazon and a few others that were hiring thousands of people, and now last year successful with Hyundai uh, for eleven to twelve thousand people. So, um, you know, I see this county, your water and sewer, making sure your capacities are sufficient. Um, you know, making sure that when we drove by, I mean, the homes we drove by being built was just unbelievable. Um, that you're dealing with, um, you know, these growth patterns and, um, you know, the, the planning for that, the water, the sewer, um, you know, the roads were, I mean, I, I appreciate the fact that you have expedited some of these projects because I will have to say in looking at and talking with your, your engineers, there's a few of those intersections, I mean, they're deadly. And I appreciate you jumping on that, um, you know, because you know, maybe I'll be driving on those roads, but um, they're dangerous. And we had the same situation in Chatham. Uh, water and sewer, uh, water because of saltwater intrusion has been a real problem. So we're with the city of Savannah um, to look at surface water further up on the Savannah River. 
but also now we're looking, uh, were, I was, but they are still looking at wells that would be in other counties, crossing county lines with mutual agreements. And those things are, you know, very possible and very doable. I've said to many of you, um, you know, you've got to get, well, we're all sitting in the same pot here, you know, with the cities um, and the towns and the county. And there's a lot of things that can be done here, you know, getting everybody involved. I, I just see a lot of opportunity. Uh, but the growth is the biggest thing. The other is it's very different living on the coast, particularly when we deal with the storms. Um, you know, it, it, you talk about people coming together. It's a whole different ball game. And when people, you come in and you don't know what to expect from a storm, I've gone from, you know, uh, over half of a tax base being wiped out. And that's terrifying. And people homeless. Um, you, know, you know, I feel like here with preparedness and, you know, post operations, water, sewer, your development, you know, your roadways, working with the state and working with our, you know, local municipalities, it's very similar, very, very similar. Um, you know, there's less, I'm with here, the social programs, where in Georgia and North Carolina, you had more of those type things. Um, but here, I, I, you know, I said to a couple of you that I love budget. It's just fun, you know. But the other thing is your utilities, uh, public works, love those things, um, you know, to make them successful. But, uh, you know, I think you guys are the other, as I looked at what your, as a, you know, fairly new board, what your priorities are. And maybe had they been different, I probably would not have applied. But I like the fact that you're going after these major capital projects and you expedited. Um, that's tough. You took a really bold step. So I have a lot of respect for that, that you're moving them forward. And uh, so a lot of similarities and, you know, I think I could do a good job for you in that, I've been down those roads many times, right. 74 county commissioners later. Right, and I would assume uh, <laughs> the, the challenges that, and, and opportunities that tourism brings Yes. as well. Yeah, well, you know, with Savannah, Tybee Island, um, right now Savannah and the county, there are 15 and a half million people a year come to Chatham County, Savannah, and Tybee Island. That's 34 to 40,000 people a day. It's huge. Uh, the money it brings in is huge. Our sales tax uh, that we have had a couple of referendums and uh, would bring in over five years, 400 to 450 million dollars. Almost 50 percent of that is paid by tourists, not locals. So I said, you know, that's that's pretty good revenue. If I only have to pay half the penny, that's pretty good. So um, yeah, a lot of similarities in working with the chamber, um, you know, uh, but also. Um, working together to keep things that are historic, historic, uh, you know, the cultural part of it, um, you know, and then obviously the beach is not a lot, but, you know, Tybee Island's very proud of, you know, what they have. Um, you know, some of the issue with drainage, I do see that here. Obviously, drainage is, you know, stormwater is a big issue for you, and with developing, you've got more rooftop, more asphalt, it will get worse. And that's where we were looking at a plan for how we hold water when we release it, and uh, even looking at you know better tidal gates to release water into uh, rivers, um, you know, and just being cognizant of where you release it if you're releasing into spawning areas. So um, you know, it's very similar. You know, so it's kind of a, a yeah. twin kind of thing. So yeah, there's a lot of similarities. Okay, thank you, sir. Commissioner sure. Cruz. Yeah, I, I think you just answered like three of my questions, but <laughs> I was on the board. I 100% I agree. We we had a, a long talk, and and it was almost uncanny in terms of size, number of employees, size of budget. Yeah, you know the situation, municipality versus county, the the utilities. We talked about the saltwater. It it was incredibly dumb. But I, I'm not going to harp on what you already just talked about. So I'll go a different direction, kind of call an audible here. Uh, we talked about some of the the efficiencies created relative to combining things. We, we talked about, hey, you know, why are four different groups doing the same thing? We can just do it under one. Um, that's something we've discussed either directly or indirectly. And because, as we discussed, we're not Charter County. We don't have a whole lot of control on that. But we do have six municipalities. We've got fire departments all over the place. We've mm -hmm. got mosquito controls. We've got school boards. There's a lot of overlap yeah. here that, that creates inefficiencies. 
what what do you feel you've done successfully that we could ultimately bring back here to Manatee County to work with our municipalities, work with our fire districts? Sure. We just had a conversation about what do we do with our EMS ambulances versus versus the, the fire departments. I'd love to find those efficiencies, save our taxpayers meaningful dollars while creating the same, if not better, services. Sure. Um, in my past two counties, and, and really uh, the strongest in Chatham County, uh, when I got there, there was not a, a lot of like between the cities and the county, administrations or board members. Um, but the first thing I did that first week is I went to, I didn't ask them to my office, I went to every city manager just to introduce myself and, you know, how can we work together? And you still, there was still tension there, but I developed a, a group called Calling All Managers and we met at least every 60 days. And, you know, it's, and I've said to some of you this morning, before you can partner, you've got to develop a relationship. It's kind of like, you know, I don't know how successful or you've not been with, with marriages, but you've got to get to know each other and you've got to develop a relationship before you get into um, developing a partnership, you know, where you sign that contract. And it took some months, but I will tell you to this day, in fact, I'm doing some consulting work for three of them now. Um, you know, we came together, we um, learned to trust each other. Uh, again, I will say what we said we were going to do, we did. But then we openly talked about animal services, marine patrol, EMS, fire services, and said, okay, as managers, what's possible? And with your board, what would they bite off? Let's go for low-hanging fruit. And there were some animal services. We got the same ordinance across the county, all municipalities, and joined it, saved them. It, it's reduced our costs. They paid into it, but at half of what they were paying before and being weaned off of that, and today they don't pay anything. They don't have to uh, because we had the um, taxes across the county, and that was fair. And um, we did uh, marine patrol because of, like, waterways. They were separate. We brought those together. Um, and but we also had to say the county's not taking over. We're just trying to find a way to reduce the cost, make it more efficient. Um, EMS, um, you know, we have a contract in um, uh, Chatham County, which has it, it works generally fine. County before I actually brought together all of the EMS and the um, four municipalities, plus all the volunteers. And after about a year and a half, we brought it together into um, a group that um, we had non-ambulatory and ambulatory that paid for itself after a year. And we were putting in about $1.2 million a year. And after a year, we didn't put in a dime. It was paying for itself, but it was managed well. I actually brought in people in several instances from the um, private industry that this is the type of stuff that they did. They looked at method, they looked at business practices and um, you know helped us do that. Um, you know, so, uh, and over time with managers meeting and talking, they then can relay some of that back to their board to give them some comfort to have the discussions because, you know, people will get up and, you know, be outraged by, oh, you, you know, our city's going to lose this, our county's going to lose this. You have to get way ahead of it. Educate the public about what's going on. Make sure your elected officials know because they're going to get called. And then attack those issues. And I will tell you the things that I've combined over the last, oh gosh, um, 20 years, very little blowback, very little. It's because you talked about it up front, but you found where, and in some cases, it really wasn't about cost savings. It was about the redundancy. People didn't like 311. We joined our 311s. Um, it just made no sense for everybody to have one. Um, it was common sense. So we went out and talked to the public and I guess educated and preached a little bit. They uh, came along. So I'm very big on looking at how can we come together and do something better. And if we can save money, even better. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Satcher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to catch me up for Chatham County, how many is it commissioners or board members? How mm -hmm. many do they have at a time? None. Nine, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote down some of the things we were talking about, so I was just going to have you, you know, touch on them here. Um, you mentioned the role of administrator as far as, like, going out in public and, mm -hmm. and talking to people. Would you just kind of, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. Um, 
you know, as as an administrator or manager um, in Chatham and my previous uh, counties, you know, I feel it's important first on issues for administration to go out with team members, department managers, and staff to go out and talk uh, to the public. What is it, you know, here's a subject, you know, talk to us about it, you know, because a lot of things when you talk about a new road in front of my house and I'm gonna, we're gonna have to take 20 feet of your, you know, driveway or your front yard, that people get pretty emotional, but go ahead and get in front of it because we'll say, well, discuss with them, what about the road? Well, it's unsafe. All right, so let's talk about how do we fix it? So involve them in the process. Um, you know, I have found on a lot of the more controversial issues, um, getting out in front, going to meet at HOAs and churches, you might have three people to show up or a hundred, you know, but go in and I think uh, by doing that, I was able to then bring information back to the board that was valuable from their constituents and then we would go to things like town hall meetings because we needed to know what the public was thinking so we could get the answers for you to answer, you know, because when you go in those meetings and you say, it's all right to say sometimes, I don't know, but I'll get back with you within. Every question can't be that way. We needed to be, or you look at um, a staff member and say, you know, um, Evan, one of the guys on the bus, you know, Evan, could you come up and talk a little bit about that? And, you know, so that was, um, that's something that, uh, to me, the communication piece and how you educate the public, and it has to be continuous. Can't be just on it. It may just be some small thing that the board's getting ready to do. Get it out there, because people really do want to know. Um, so I feel strongly, and, and I, I pride myself on good communication skills, uh, going out and talking with the public. You know, and you've got people from here to here, uh, their knowledge. Um, you know where they are in the world, but you know, be willing to go out and not be afraid of it. Uh, because you know, sometimes you'll get in a public meeting and it can be a little intimidating, but that's all right, I'm still alive, so, you know. But yeah, it's, it's absolutely important for staff to get out, but also um, for the board to get out and talk so to people. There were, and then a couple of other things on a topic. Um, well, I'm gonna put three of them, just things that I, in our conversation, mm -hmm. um, you were talking about co uh, communicating with the board, which you just kind of uh, springboarded off. So sure. communicating with to the board, how important that is. Um, you talked about how you would use, first of all, the what you mentioned earlier, the calling all managers. You mentioned that your, you and your board would do a lot of texting back and forth to keep everybody mm -hmm. on the same page. Sure. And then, um, and then you mentioned like if you had an initiative and you wanted to come to the board and sell, you know, sell that initiative to the board. Sure. Um, any thoughts on those things? Well, one of the things is, is um, you know, when I went to Wayne or went to Chatham, uh, the one thing that I asked of the board, and this was in uh, one of the final interviews, I said, I will do my best. In fact, I, I will guarantee you 97 to 98% that you will not be surprised by something. If I find it out, you're going to know it because you have to. You know, they're in your district or in the county, these folks are some incident. Um, you know, and you really have to find your choice of communication and the board there like to text. So I would send out even a group text to say, just to let you know, we have an incident on such and such bridge. And it may not mean anything, but if it were major, they were gonna get a call, you get a call from somebody in your district. Let's say there had been, you know, a part one crime. Well, you kind of need to know about that. There's been a shooting. Now, you know, there's kind of a break where, you know, if working for you, I would say, at what level do you want me to communicate? You know, is there some level by, I don't really want to know about, but here up, absolutely. Gotcha. Um, but also about, um, you know, subjects, if something's come to say, heads up, you know, was that rotary and heard this, this, and this, you might want to kind of put your ear to the ground and see what you hear, you know. Okay, thank you, no other questions. Sure. All right, thank you, sir. And I don't have anyone else on the board at this time. Okay. I appreciate your candor. All right, and I appreciate yesterday. Uh, your team was great, but I appreciate this morning. That was enjoyable, and uh, I guess we called it, um, what is it, the the dating deal where you go in really quick. and Speed yeah, dating. Speed dating. Right. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully I made a match of everybody. So anyway, but I appreciate the opportunity, and 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank we you, appreciate sir. it. Okay. The next contestant. Do, do they? We're okay. Do they? Do they need a break? We're we're ready. All right, sir. How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So what we've been doing is we've been having each uh, candidate just start off, or applicant just start off by uh, introducing themselves, because the public is watching, and Absolutely. they didn't have the opportunity uh, to, to talk with this morning like we all did. So if you just inter introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about your background and bring us up to speed. Okay. My name is Don Rosenthal. Uh, I have about 30 years of uh, community development uh, growth experience, managing growth. Um, I've worked in the greater Tampa Bay area. I was uh, brought in from uh, Atlanta for Pasco to manage their development in Pasco County. Brought in something called a cellar. Um, and I see that you definitely have a cellar here too. We brought in something called ViewSpec to allow remote inspections. And we've been working in this field, either construction, building, growth support for over 30 years. All right. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, who's up? I actually got extended time with Mr. Rosenthal this morning. <laughs> Went really well. Commissioner Satcher. Um, give us a rundown of what you think uh, would be the biggest opportunity and then maybe the biggest thing that you'd need to look out for um, if you were to take this position. Well, I, I think a big opportunity for the for the county would be to uh, offer vision to the uh, to the citizens. I think some of the the complaints and and the uh, comments about trust or lack of trust are because they don't understand uh, really what the vision is that the commission has for the for the county overall and the development plan. And sometimes, based on the conversations that we had last night uh, with some citizens, they don't understand the development process. So I I think that uh, my first job would be one of educating and helping them understand. Uh, the nature of development, where you're going, and what the vision is for the for the county overall. All right, thank you, sir. I'm going to ask you. Uh, Doc has been passing around his paper with his 30, 60, 90 day plan. Um, let's just go with a 90 day plan. What what do you see when you come in here uh, in your first 90 days? Well, the first 90 days, I try to familiarize myself with the with the county, but more importantly. Uh, with the problems that the county are having. I'll try to determine what's important uh, to each uh, of the commissioners, what are your, your main items that you want to look at, and I would look at uh, staff and getting staff to work on the CIP uh, program to get that program up and running uh, uh, more efficiently, as efficiently as possible. Not that it's not a pretty efficient now, but I just think you could probably get more starts out of the existing program than, than we have right now. Uh, trying to get to know the staff, trying to get to, to see any problems that the county has overall. Are there any pending legal issues that we, we would need to be made aware of? Those are the kinds of things that we would be looking at within that 90-day time frame. All right, and we also discussed um, different people's opinions of the role of the administrator. Would you mind touching on your opinion of the role of the administrator? Absolutely. My, my opinion of the role of the administrator is, is to uh, fulfill the, uh, the requirements from the, from the commissioners. Uh, my my role wouldn't be to try and make policy, of course, but it would be try to carry out the policy established by the board as efficiently as I as I could, uh, contributing my guidance that I I would give based on my 30 years of experience in the field. 
All right, thank you, sir. Commissioner Bearden. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Rosenthal. Commissioner. So we, we spoke in regards to, because we have a very conservative board here, cutting cost. Um, that being said, you know, we kind of went in detail in regards to what we want to look at as far as cutting costs and how you would go about doing that. Can you explain a little bit to the public um, what we discussed this morning and how you, would, how you would approach that method? Absolutely. Well, we would, we would take and look at the entire uh, county as a whole and look at ways that you could save money, uh, maybe by privatizing some industries like maybe the bus line or something like that to begin with. Uh, and you would let your choice of whether you did that or not be based on the numbers, not on, on your, just opinion. But you look at the numbers and see what makes sense from a fiscal uh, standpoint. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, as you and I discussed, I mean, you're coming from Pasco, and it's arguably along with Sarasota, maybe the closest county to us relative to similarities in terms of size, scope, budget, proximity to, to Tampa, coast. Uh, you, you were there for a while. You saw a lot transpire and move forward with Pasco County. I'm not trying to put you on the spot to, to put us down, but it's, I, I think it gives some direction on where your focus would be. What do you think you were able to accomplish or Pasco is able to accomplish better than or ahead of Manatee County that you could bring here from your experience in Pasco to help move us forward based on that real life experience? Well, two things. I, I think uh, I think the vision is a big issue because I think the vision, not having the, the vision, not that you don't have the vision, but the vision that the uh, citizens understand, the lack of understanding of the vision for the county, I think that's the root of some of the some of the feedback and kickback that you get on things because I think the county is accomplishing a great many things. I just don't think that a lot of people know about it. I think uh, a bigger effort should be put into making citizens aware of, of what you're doing. I think another thing I would bring, uh, in addition to trying to make that uh, make that knowledge more available to the citizens, is the ability and, and uh, understanding that I have of the development process and, and where certain things are necessary, th certain things that can be done to uh, help the process that are, that will be reasonable to all parties concerned. All right, thank you, sir. Commissioner Turner. Hey, Don. Um, you talk about the vision uh, for the public, which it, it does seem you must have identified that that, that, that communication is not going out well, and you did have some ideas for that too. The vision for our team, our internal team, do you think that that is just as important? Absolutely. But I, I think that you have, a, you have an excellent team right now. So one of the things I like to consider myself and pride myself in is being a team builder. But I didn't emphasize that because you have a great team already. What I would like to do is, is to, to help lead that team and help shield that team when, there's, when the need presents itself. Uh, I think that your team is accomplishing a great deal, but I don't think that it's being advertised and made available uh, to the public as much as, as it should be. Because you're not getting credit for the things that you actually are doing. Right. And that's one of the things we want to put a lot of emphasis on. And we talked about efficiencies earlier. Could you expand on some of the technology that could create efficiencies? Like Absolutely. You talked about inspections. Could Absolutely, you yeah. On that? There's, a, there's a great many, uh, uh, and I have to tip my hat to your uh, Deputy County Administrator, uh, Courtney, where she's already utilizing some of those things. One is a seller. It's a program that kind of manages the, the, uh, the process for you, and she's already implemented that. Also, there's a new uh, program that I think she's either implemented already or in the process of implementing called ViewSpec that actually allows for remote inspections. Uh, she's starting out, I think, with uh, mechanical inspections, uh, but that can be spread to other things. That eliminates the need for the inspector to go get in his truck and drive out to the field. He can do the inspection from his, from his office, and that, that's going to be a tremendous uh, savings. Now, normally the older inspectors kind of don't want to do that, uh, but they have to be you know, trained to do it. And once they do it and see how well it works, I think they'll, you'll get buy-in. Donuts will be good. They can get the donuts at the office and still be on, on the road. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, safer that way. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't have anyone on the board at the moment. Are there any additional questions? Oh, Commissioner Satcher looks like he's uh, moving in. Um, Sir. We went over some in, in our office, um, and you've mentioned vision multiple times. 
Um, there's probably there's always going to be times where I mean any any time you have someone that's over you and authority over you um, that you're not going to disagree. Um, so tell me, you know, what you see yourself, what you see your role as in regards to the board. So there's going to be times I imagine where you're excited about what the board's doing. There might be a time where you don't like what the board's doing. What do you see your role, you know, in those situations? Well, I, I agree with you. I'm sure that situations like that will, will come up. But uh, my my role for the board is to uh, uh, help them to benefit, help the board to benefit from my, my 30 years of experience. Uh, and I work for the board. The board doesn't work for me. So I, I wouldn't expect the board to do whatever my opinion is. I would expect the board to do uh, whatever they are motivated to do based on the needs of their the citizens that they represent. Uh, so. I would be here to offer you my, my uh, guidance as far as my experience in the areas, of whatever area we're talking about that I've had experience in, and moving on. I wouldn't expect you to, to let my opinion uh, be the deciding factor, but just one of the factors that help you to make a better decision. All right. Thank you, sir. No other questions? Mr. Clegg. No, sir. I just was going to thank him. As the wife okay. No, else. that's all right. You, you looked... Thank eager. you, sir. So. Thank you. I'm just reading the body language up here. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it very much, Don. Thank you. Commissioners, do you want to take a break or do you want to go on to the next person? I know. I, I agree. I'm just making sure. Yeah. Hold on. We're taking a break. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bishop. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, I ask the applicants to stay behind. There are in the room in case you need to bring them back for follow-up questions and or Part. if you want okay. them to come back in after the... Yeah. Presentation. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. No, sir. This is. We don't have a union here, so we have to keep working. Um, all right. So, Mr. Butterfield, what we've been doing is, uh, as each person comes up, asking you, since the the public is watching this and from from home and haven't had the opportunity to meet you, like we have, we're asking you to introduce yourself and uh, sort of give us some background and tell us how you got to that podium. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. <clears throat> My name is Andrew Butterfield. I'm a current resident of St. Pete Beach, Florida, and I work for the city of St. Pete Beach. Uh, I've got uh, 30 years of management experience, uh, four years in municipal government, uh, but uh, military experience uh, with base management. I felt like my experience led me to uh, be a good fit here to work for this uh, Manatee County team. Um, I'm uh, really like to thank uh, the commissioners for their time the last uh, uh, two days and the staff has been very uh, very helpful helping me learn uh, more about Manatee County the staff the citizens the businesses uh, the economics and what makes everything go so I'm uh, very very impressed with the county and the uh, the leadership and the management and uh, being a part of that hopefully I could bring something else to the to the uh, to the team and uh, everybody wins so thanks for your, uh, your consideration of my application and thanks for having me here yes sir thank you uh, thank you for your service Commissioner Cruz right out of the gate yeah one of the things we talked uh, pretty extensively about because it was very interesting was your time up in New Jersey uh, we, we talked about the base and how it, it was getting consolidated and you ended up going from one base to, or, or, or one uh, service base to three and, and you had to take the, the different attitudes, different personalities, different mindsets of, of multiple different organizations and, and figure out how to meld them together, work together. It's we, we have similar dynamics here both with our municipalities and, and groups and different people's opinions outside of this building as well as the departments within it. So, you know, what, what did you learn and how did you manage that type of merger and how would that translate into being a county administrator for a, a county of our size? Well, uh, Commissioner, uh, th thanks. For, uh, that's a, a good summation of what it was. It was uh, uh, the um, base realignment and closure commission ordered uh, bases that were contiguous with another base from another service to, to join and uh, do more uh, uh, cooperative efforts and save money by having one commander or one police force as, instead of multiples. So uh, joint base McGuire Dix Lakehurst. I went in to be the CO of Lakehurst and then uh, during my time there, the uh, orders came in that we had to merge. So 
I ended up being the deputy commander of uh, the joint base, uh, working for an Air Force general. I was Navy myself, but uh, again, the leadership team all fused together. And then our job was to try to get everybody on the same page. And in very practical ways, uh, there were challenges all the time. Uh, merging three organizations together that have different evaluation systems, different pay systems. Uh, you'd think the military was one giant beast, but it's many, many tribes. So there's different ways of doing everything. Uh, so we had to figure out, we didn't get all the direction from the uh, up high in DC. We uh, had to figure it out on the ground. So um, three different civil, civil engineering branches, three different police forces, three different fire departments. Plus you had the military folks and the civilian way of doing things with uh, federal civilian employees. So what it took was a lot of uh, coordination, a lot of meetings, a lot of time, a lot of getting to know your counterparts, first finding them and then making time to meet with them and figuring things out and coming up with uh, agreements on the ground and then having to feed that back up because everybody had a, had a boss that was uh, maybe interested in, uh, in the, the location there of having their units there but didn't want to maybe give, give up authority. So that kind of collaborative effort, it, it just takes rolling up your sleeves and, uh, and uh, finding your peers, meeting them, and really having honest conversations and give and take. So I, I think some of those skills that uh, I uh, used and learned there would translate to the magnitude of uh, this size of, uh, of a workforce, the uh, municipalities plus the unincorporated space, plus the neighboring counties, plus all the stakeholders uh, in, in the business community and in uh, uh, the civilian community, I, I think translates pretty well. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Bearden. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Butter Butterfield, thank you for being here and interviewing with us today. My uh, pleasure, sir. My question to you is that Coming from a transition from the military to public government, right? Government in general. Um, when you were managing those bases, a lot of times you had to answer to one person. Typically, it was a general that was above you. That's correct, sir. Correct. Yeah. Or an admiral or whatever it might be. A one star, two star, three star, four star, right? I had a general 10 feet away and an admiral about 100 miles away. But it, <laughs> yeah. They both thought they were my boss. But typically you got your orders from one person typically, and, you know, you probably never said no to that. A lawful order, you, you know, sir. Exactly, uh, you, right. You can't so, say no. You just got to figure out a way to make it happen. That's so, right. Yeah. Um, so the difference between going from that to this, which you have seven bosses, how would you – if you were if you were to come in, how would you manage that process? Well, I've, I've, I've had a good start getting to know all of you today, and I would uh, I know your time is valuable, but I would ask for more time from each of you to uh, sit with and find out your priorities, what you want from me, because there's probably a, a seven different levels of uh, different ways to communicate. Some might prefer phone calls, a daily check-in, a weekly check-in. Uh, emails. Uh, so uh, I would find out how you want to me to communicate, when the best times are, and in what fashion. Uh, and personalize that because, yeah, seven, seven bosses, and I, would, I want them each to be happy and successful. So, um, yeah. But that, sometimes we won't all be happy. Uh, <laughs> You know, um, with I was, things I was, that, I was promised you would be happy. <laughs> so, no, I'm kidding. So, you know, you don't understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, it. I guess what the question I'm trying to ask you is that how do you go about managing the process of going from one commissioner to the next and being even, you know, with the attitude of, of trying to do the, going from that transition of, of listening to one commanding officer, right, to listening to, let's just say, seven commanding officers and getting directives, how do you go about managing that process on which direction to go to bring the county where um, we're being, we want to bring it? Uh, I, I just used, I've got 
two of these and one of these, and I would try to listen more than I talk. And uh, if I get to a point where I just don't have the information to act or the time to get everything done at everybody's request, uh, then I have decisions to make. I certainly won't try to do everything myself. I've met two very capable uh, deputies here. Mm -hmm. I understand a third may be on the way. And hopefully we'd be a synergistic team that uh, would be able to balance the workload and uh, separate projects. So we're, we're, we're not all on the wave tops of a project, but somebody knows an issue exceedingly well. And uh, so divisional labor there. Um, but uh, I'm sure none of my seven bosses would be shy about letting, they know, letting me know they need more information or they need it at a different time or a different manner. Oh, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> I, I guessed as much. So. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Turner. Mr. Butterfield, uh, I, th I think you made some great observations about uh, the staff, you, the deputies, and everything. Could you share some of your insights there and, and how you'd leverage them in this new role? And I'm not sure. I'm new, but I'm not sure how much of a, your boss I am. I consider maybe we send ideas, but... So, but share, share, share your insights there and how you see your role and how you can leverage that talent. Well, I, I, there's, there's always things that need fixing. So anything that doesn't need fixing, I would uh, not spend my time on that. Um, if I can name him by name, uh, Charlie seems incredibly capable and very experienced here, as does Courtney. I've been here less time, but uh, great energy and great information, and they've been very giving of their time and, and uh, given all of us information. Uh, so I would uh, spend a lot of time with them right off the bat, and because uh, I'm sure there's, I might have a great idea, but it's been tried before, and it's, it either doesn't work or it's illegal or, or something, and or they may have a better idea. So uh, I would only want to work on uh, things that, uh, that are within the possible, and um, I, I, words are failing me, but, but uh, again, not trying to do everything myself or, or uh, make a name for myself by changing something for change's sake. I would, uh, would want to work on things that, uh, and the corporate knowledge here, I want to uh, foster an environment of communication where you can receive bad news because you can't fix something if you don't know it's bad and something, an organization this large, there's going to be problems because humans, we create problems <laughs> and it's a very human organization. So, uh, but if I don't find out, if I don't get the information that something needs fixing, it won't get addressed. And then, then the workforce is complaining, boy, they never fix these things. They never listen to us. So I would really want to do what I could by getting out and about and meeting people, but also talking to the key folks who have some history on it and find out um, what the ground truth is, where the problems are so I can address them. Good answer, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, um, sir. I know we've definitely chewed up some of the same dirt in Pensacola together, but <laughs> um, back in the days of NAS Pensacola, but <laughs> Commissioner Cruz's question kind of got me thinking. Um, you know, running, this is a giant company. It is a government, but it's a company. We have enterprises, utilities, different things that bring income into the company, as well as tax base and things like that. I know you're a base commander and you're a squadron commander, which are tough jobs. Walk me through the process of how that, you know, being a base commander, being the operations manager in St. Pete Beach, we are just so much larger than that with our budget, CIP budget, employees, managing the, the seven of us up here, helping to manage that process. Walk me through how that transition can, can get me to the point of being comfortable with saying, hey, look, this guy can run this county. He is the guy for our position. He is the guy for this position. Um, but through military background, and just help me get there. Help me transition me from base commander, squadron commander, operations manager, to running this behemoth of, a, of an organization which is Mantee County government and Mantee County. Well, I, I don't, I'm not in private industry, so I'm not making something. And uh, I figure my job here at the ninth floor would be, almost everything I do would be boiling down to communicating. And I, I, 
I think I can communicate very well orally and in writing and in uh, public speaking if I need to. It's, um, I, I, I've said this once before today. I think um, you can't say something once and know that everybody gets it. You've got to think about what you want to want to say and why you want to say it. So to me, creating a fostering an environment of um, like a, a climate or a culture here of uh, honesty, accountability, and you can speak up, you can float up good ideas uh, instead of just com complaining uh, in the shop, knowing you have an avenue of, uh, whether it's a, a suggestion box, a, a good ideas box, uh, something like that, uh, so that uh, the problems can be addressed and we can always be improving. Um, lost my train of thought. Can I follow uh, up? So, but as, as a squadron commander, I- Oh, you're I, finished, I'm sorry, sir. I'm done, okay, sorry. Um, uh, on a follow-up, you know, we have a tremendous budget and a tremendous CIP budget. Being a base commander, <clears throat> do you feel that the fiscal experience you got there has prepared you to take over at the maximum, a, big, a huge budget like we have, and be able to fiscally run that? Um, as, as county administrator, yes, we have, we have a very good financial team and a great CFO, but you're the guy that has to drive the budget. Do you feel that your experience being base commander and things like that can bring you into being running this help run it, run this budget here at Manti County? I, I haven't done something to this size by far, so uh, I just figure basic principles uh, would, whether it's millions or billions, uh, the, the basic principles still apply. Uh, but uh, no, I, I can't make any claims to be uh, as sharp as say Sheila is on finance. Uh, I have not made a career of finance. So um, I, it's a very good question, and uh, again, it's an area where I, I would rely on the experts as I learned the vocabulary of, uh, of county management. Yes, sir, thank you. All right, any other questions for Mr. Butterfield? Commissioner Satcher. <laughs> May not be just you, Mr. Butterfield, but since all four are done, I'm sure the chair might want to add. But I remember uh, when I was, you know, before I was a, uh, a commissioner coming to one of these meetings and speaking, and I had done a lot, I'll just flat out say it, a lot of public speaking um, up before that point. And my voice was not even solid as I spoke into the, cause the commissioners are all up here and whatever it was. And so I just want to commend you and all the other applicants for being here today. Cause I didn't have anything on the line. And you know, these guys are, this is a, talking about a job and a and future. So uh, kudos to you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, commissioner. Uh, speaking about myself is not my forte. <clears throat> so uh, I kind of lose my voice sometimes when that is the forced topic, but thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Any other comments, commissioners? Okay. Sir, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much, Appreciate Mr. You. Chairman, commissioners. Commissioners, you want to take a break and come back and discuss? All right. We'll take a five-minute recess.
Okay, thank you. We're, we're back. Um, and we've interviewed all of uh, the four candidates. And so now we're just here for a discussion on how we thought the process went, discussion on the candidates. The discussion can kind of go anywhere the board would like it to go. Would anyone like to put themselves on the board at this time for discussion? <laughs> Commissioner Turner. Oh, great. Uh, hold on. Mr. Clegg. Mr. Clegg. <coughs> did you want to discuss? Yeah, but do you want what to did hear, you think of the candidates? Do you want to, uh, I'll keep those opinions to myself, sir, but do, would you like to hear from the consultant about what the next step is, or would you rather talk first? I mean, because uh, he's well, prepared I just to, wanted to make a suggestion. Maybe they can, well, maybe the consultant can, can either yay or nay my, can, my suggestion. What I was thinking was so that we'd have, we could narrow it down over the weekend. Yeah, it is. I'm just not in it is maybe we narrow it down here today to two, and then we can con <laughs> contemplate over the weekend. So Would that be a process that? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Turner, because it's noticed as a work session, I have to advise against making any decisions on the candidates in this meeting, because you really are not allowed to vote. Yeah. And so I would say you should wait until Tuesday to do that. To actually hold some kind of vote. But he's yes, free sir. to discuss with us and tell us he's which He's free to he share likes. his thoughts, of course. And I think that's a good idea. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So that's how we're going to do it. Do you still want the floor, sir? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to my n notes for a second. Okay. And anyone else feel free? No. Sure. I'll just, well, I don't mind chiming in. I'll tell you that um, I enjoyed, actually, I enjoyed meeting all of them. I thought they all had... They all had some strengths. They all had some weaknesses. Um, my conversations, I think really the, the two that I sort of clicked the best with were, were probably Rosenthal and Butterfield. Um, both of them sort of were methodical in their thoughts and in their comments. I thought that their vision of what the role of the administrator is, I agreed with that. Um, their their vision on, or their, their intention on how they would lead and how they would govern. I agreed with each of them on that. Excuse me. Um, they had their weaknesses, like, like all the others. Um, but I thought that each of those two, I felt, were, would be a good fit here. Uh, I'm not really ready to definitively narrow it down to two, in, in my opinion. Uh, I would like to take the weekend to think about it. But... These are the two that I thought were, so were strong. I'll give you my top four, yes. Um, I don't mind giving you my top four, uh, but I'll tell you the two of my top four are not, we're not here today. So there's that. Um, anyway, no one's put themselves on the board. Excellent. Commissioner Ballard. I'll put myself on the board. So I, uh, I, I also really enjoyed my conversation with, with each of the candidates, and I, I, I do think that every one of them had significant strengths that would that would bring something great to the county i mean um you know with um with rosenthal i i love that he has tampa bay experience i love that he's worked in a a county that has that's extremely similar to manatee county um with uh with mr smith i i absolutely think that his experiences in, in Savannah translate very well to Manatee County. Um, I, in, in, my, in my conversations, um, I, I agree with, uh, with the chair that uh, I, I clicked very well with Mr. Butterfield. I like his, his approach, um, and I really, uh, I really liked his, his energy, his perspective. Um, my, uh, number two candidate is, uh, actually Mr. Doherty. He has a ton of energy. Um, and I, I think that he has, uh, a bias toward action, which is, uh, a quality that, that I like. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Uh, and so I, I appreciate, I appreciate that quality as well. So those are, those are my top two for now. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Turner. Yeah, and the meet, uh, the, meet, the meet and greet. You guys doing it again? I'm going to start beating you. I haven't said a word. I can't prevent someone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you, got, you got the mic, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. 
All right, so in the meet and greet last night, I would say first impressions. Um, Mr. Butterfield and Doc definitely impressed me in first impressions. When you're just having a chat and you're just trying to get the feel for somebody's energy and the way they are with people. Um, in today's meetings, what, you know, um, Lee's experience and, and leadership with with the county's size and everything that definitely play that definitely plays in. I was um, I was impressed with Don Rosenthal and the way he looks at the efficiencies and things. So um, as a roundup, as people, like I, I understand, Butterfield does not quite have the um, the the experience on the scale and everything. I think that. I think he's at a disadvantage here. What I noticed, what I like about Butterfield is he doesn't like talking about himself as much, and so you can have a you can have more of a two way conversation with him. Where's my observation on on? Um, a, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It, it, you know it, this this setup um, him on on the podium was a little tougher for him than the others. I think. Um, but it did, it didn't get it gave me a better feeling because he he's more of a listener he's more of a listener than the others and in this in this type of a role I think that's a really really important quality so I would say he may not have shined in front of us here but he shined in other ways in pro, in in um, closed doors that's my take thank you sir commissioner Cruz <coughs> yeah I, I I said the other day I, I was very happy with the finalists we had. I was very happy with the, the overall collection of resumes we had. I, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and, I, and all five, I mean, unfortunately, one of them dropped out, and I, and I like that one that dropped out. But, you know, all the four we talked to today all had great qualities. I, if any of the four, well, not if, when any of the four get picked, I'll be happy to work with all of them. I, I won't feel like I got slighted or somebody, somebody's in here that shouldn't be. All of them are qualified in their own unique way. Um, you know, for me, though, if we're just kind of going off the cuff on top two, well, I, I thought Lee Smith was just great. I mean, it's, it's, he literally is working in a county similar to us. He had upstairs, he had great conversations about utilities, about public works, about consolidation, cost savings, all the stuff we talk about up here. I, I just thought he would fit in well a lot of government level experience. On the other extreme, my other top choice of those two would be Butterfield as well, and I think everyone's kind of trending that way for the exact opposite reason. I, I said when we first started, when the consultants called me and said, what are you looking for? I said, I don't want somebody who thinks they're the smartest person in the room. I want somebody who can manage people, who can lead people, who can get the smartest people in the room like the Evans and everybody of the world. To, and to allow them to do their job. Find me the smart people to run the departments. You just run those smart people. And that is what Butterfield has always done. That's what he did on his base. That's what he's done for his whole career. He doesn't pretend to know more than he knows, but I think he will know how to energize people, how to steer people, and how to really consolidate this county. So for me, those were my two for almost exact opposite reasons. Uh, but again, all four of them I, I liked. I, I would be happy with all four, but those are my top two. Mr. Clegg. Uh, I can see Commissioner Bearden on the board. I would like to go last if I could. Okay. Commissioner Bearden. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I, all four of them were impressive. You know, um, I was looking for particular qualities, um, not qualities as much as knowing about everything, but more of a leadership quality. Um, I could tell you, um, I thought that Dar Doc was, had that leadership quality that I was kind of looking for. I also saw that he had a hunger that was inside of him that could maybe not has been on the level of 2,000 employees, but somebody who was more than capable of tackling that challenge and, and leading an organization and following out um, the orders of what this board wants. Um, I also thought Rosenthal had a lot of experience. 
but I also knew that he's been around the game for a very long time. And, you know, knowing that he has and in this area, was that somebody that can just speak the lingo to me and tell me what I want to hear or somebody that actually will take charge and, you know, carry the, the county where we need to take it. Um, I thought, you know, Butterfield was a great candidate too, and Smith. I mean, they were all great candidates, but my top two were going to be Doc and Rosenthal for sure on that um, because of, you know, certain qualities I was personally looking for. So. Uh, I, I put myself on the board. I just wanted to throw one more aspect in there too about um, about Butterfield, and that was that we we did have a good conversation about ideology, philosophy, um, without trying to wade into like politics. But um, I think that ideologically, he's pretty well aligned with this board as well. Um, and and ultimately, that matters. You know, if we're going to be a team up here together, I think that that matters, and that comes into play. So I, he was pretty well aligned with us. So I was happy with that. Agreed. Um, that's not the only, you know, not the only characteristic you're looking for, but but it is certainly one. Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And since we're all getting on the board and having this discussion, um, I'll jump in here. Uh, you know, we um, again, like everybody else said, we we we've, these are four very solid candidates. It's been a long process to whittle it down from where we came from, and thank you to the consultant for putting all this together and uh, getting us to this point. And uh, all four bring different aspects um, to how they could run this county and work with us and work with the public. And my big thing was is that with each of them, I was looking for leadership, integrity, and vision. The vision of where they saw us or this county as um, going forward 10, 20, 30 years from now and how we, they could move this county forward as a county administrator. Because who knows what the board will look like next year and then the year after that. So they could have a very diverse board after that again. The leadership, I want to look for leadership to be able to lead us, lead this board, lead this county, lead the staff. They all know we have a great staff. We have two great deputy county administrators, um, one serving as interim right now. And they have a good team already. There might be a third coming on, and then they, whoever it might be, picks a fourth. And then integrity. Are they going to stand for what they stand for? Are they going to? We've had some lack of integrity in some other places um, that have hurt us. Um, and I think all four of them had shown me that they all have great integrity in what they do. If we're getting down to the final two or how we're looking at this, I'll just come out. My final two would be um, Lee Smith and um, um, Mr. Butterfield. I forgot his rank, but Mr. Butterfield. Yeah, what, was, what was his rank? I, don't, I didn't remember that either. What? you got to turn your mic on. 06. What does that mean? Captain. Captain? Captain. captain. Okay, he was a captain. Captain's right. the same as a colonel. Marine same as a colonel. Yep. Good to know. All right. Captain Butterfield. Captain Butterfield. Okay. Um, any other comments? I, I do, sir, if I could go last, unless any other commissioner Well, Commissioner Satcher likes to go last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he waits usually till I grab the gavel, but this time he, he was early. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I'm ready to say um, exactly where I'm at, but I just I know that by the time we come back, you know, I'd rather put some things out there. Um, I mean, I was concerned. I loved uh, Dale uh, Doc's energy. Um, it's a much smaller budget that he's run, but you could definitely make the argument that you know it scales up. Um, Rosenthal was, I felt like, was just great in my office. I mean, as far as he was just you know really personable, and each thing I would ask him about, he had really you know good experience and answers. Um, you know, but so it's a lot of good things there. Um, and then Butterfield, obviously, I mean, sharp guy and, and good experience as well. So, um, so I guess that's three that I mentioned and not two, but, um, Sorry, the 
match on the sports. <laughs> well, I, I would say there were some some of the you know maybe tougher questions that I had. Um, you know, I didn't want to ask in this session, and, and I don't think I'll bring them up now. Um, but I'll, I'll take some time over the weekend. Maybe I'll call the candidate uh, that I had some a little bit tougher questions for, um, and maybe we could all you know have contact numbers for him over the weekend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's a good idea. I was thinking actually the same thing. So, Commissioner Turner. Being new, I don't know the rules, but you know what? I would like to get, I would like to get Mr. Bishop's take, his impression, um, because they spent all day but with him. Well, <laughs> I'd like to get on the record on that. Maybe that's better for one-on-one. -on -one. Otherwise, you're gonna put him in a tight spot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good one-on-one. -on -one. That's a good one-on-one -on -one conversation. Okay, well, thank you, thank you for thinking ahead for me, lads. I was more thinking. How about if you Charlie. said? How about if you said what other staff members' feelings were? <laughs> I'll get with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Mr. County Attorney. Um, Mr. Chairman, so commissioners, this item will be on the agenda next Tuesday. All four candidates will be available for the board to make decisions about. You know, in the term, they'll all be in there as as options. I would like the consultant to come forward and just talk briefly with you about the procedure going forward so that if you have concerns about it or specifics that you'd like us to be prepared to be, you know, be ready for on Tuesday that we, we know about them now. So Mr. Connor, if you could please just briefly address the board on how you all have typically handled this and what, you know, if they have questions or want to su suggest other options, be prepared to discuss those. Just introduce yourself for the record, sir. Uh, Rick Connor with Colin Benziger and Associates. And thank you again for the opportunity to be here. I, I want to be the I guess it would be about the 483rd time somebody said it today, but I want to thank the two assistant directors, uh, assistant administrators. They just have been a delight to work with and have done a fantastic job for us, and so um, thanks. Um, as to the procedure, we, we hope that you found that procedure that we recommended last time when we narrowed the list. We hope that you saw that was very effective, uh, got us right to the point. I think the whole process took 10 minutes, and so, and, and I would like to think that you all were very satisfied. We had some good candidates, and I think you all did an exceptional job of picking the right ones. Um, what we'd like to do is basically that same procedure again. Uh, I know that some of you saw the recommendation that Colin sent out, and there was some questions about that. He and I have spoken since, and what we would, um, sort of improve on that uh, recommendation, or our thought to improve on that recommendation is to ask you, and it would tie right into what you've done today, is to rank the top, your top two choices. So you would put a one and a, a one or a two and, and leave the others blank. Do a preliminary assessment. If it comes out clearly where your intention is as a group, Again, process is essentially done. If not, we just keep going through the discussion process and the elimination process and, and get you there. And we'll, we'll be here to do whatever it takes to help that process. But I think that is going to be as effective again, especially after seeing uh, how you all have spoken today. I think that's going to be as effective again as it was the first time. I think you're... I think you're kind of headed in a direction is, is what it seems like. So that's what we envision. You all are in charge. We're here to do your will, but we do have the recommend that recommendation for you. If we, do, if we do have a disparity on the vote, what, does the next, what is the next step? We interview again. We're asking questions. What's the next step? If, I didn't catch the first part of your question, so would you mind? If there's disparity in the vote, so oh, it's, okay. a, a little bit, a it's a little bit all over the place, what's the next step? The next step would be then to have your discussion. Um, each of you have opinions, obviously, on the candidates. I, our suggestion would be have, have a discussion. Talk about why, well, why do you feel this candidate stronger than that candidate? Oh, I didn't pick that up. You're right. That's a good point. I didn't realize that was in their background. I didn't notice it, and it didn't come up in our discussion. I'm glad that uh, you did catch it, and that would be pertinent to us. Have that type of discussion. 
then go back and maybe rank top three, one, two, and three. Come back, look at the numbers. If, if I, I don't think you're going to see that disparity, but if you do, we just continue that process until you get to the point where you're all comfortable. Um, I, I think you're going to narrow in faster than, than not. But we need that backup process, and that is it. Let you continue that, that discussion until you feel comfortable. Was the uh, was the form you're talking about? Was that emailed to us? How are we getting this? Yeah. It was okay. Thank you. Oh yes, um, the oh, form. We'll have many copies available for the meeting, so we'll do them hard copy and have them available for all of you. The same. Oh, the whole thing off because the forms aren't time. available. Yes. yes sir. <laughs> yeah. Okay, commissioners. Any additional questions for the consultant or the attorney? Okay, hearing none, we're adjourned. Okay, we're going to we're going to reopen our meeting for public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to address the board regarding today's workshop? Seeing none, we'll close public comment and we're adjourned. <laughs>